Hello world, human sustainability here. Thanks for coming back and seeing me on my journey. So I'm back on property, I'm standing next to the mother. Uh, it took me, I don't know, about three hours to get here. And I saw a bunch on the way in. Um, I do have snowshoes. Uh, but somebody had been in here with a snowmobile that broke the trail, so that made things way, way easier for me. Um, saw, holy cow, a lot of tracks. Um, at least one bear, maybe two. A whole bunch of moose with one that was absolutely enormous. Biggest moose track I've ever seen in my life. The thing is absolutely huge. Uh, dozens of deer. Uh, one one area back in there in a field, it looked like two or three of them were chasing each other around in circles and just playing. I mean, it just looked like they were just having fun in the snow. A um, whole bunch of rabbit, a uh, whole bunch of like rodent, you know, small moles and things like that. Squirrel, uh, fox, saw some fox as well. So, whole bunch of tracks coming in here. Um, dog as well, but, and I'm, I'm saying dog and not wolf because they just magically appeared and then they magically disappeared. So, I, I have a feeling that the guy that came back here on the sled had his dog on the back and the dog smelled, there was a whole bunch of scat in the area and the dog smelled it and jumped off the sled and, you know, ran around sniffing everything. So, um pretty sure that was just somebody's you know pet <laughs> uh so yeah a whole bunch of a whole bunch of tracks on the way in which is kind of cool um i do have the snowshoes obviously without them i wouldn't have been able to get here um that's the way up to the lake i was gonna mark it but boy you know three hours just to get here oh boy um i'm tired <laughs> Um, so yeah, I had a, a friend of mine ask me, um, to tell me, to, to describe what a perfect day on the land would be. So, boy, that threw me for a loop. Um, my friend Keeks, short for Kiki, Keeks, uh, you know, what's, what, what would be your perfect day on the land? And, you know... I, I've had to th think about that because I, I know what they're asking, right? They're asking what, what is idyllic. Uh, so what is the best case scenario? But um, I think the perfect day on the land is, you know, one where I maintain my integrity without compromising my character. And I don't let my emotion drive my personality to burn everything around me to ash. I mean, that's a perfect day. You know, no injuries. And no bridges burnt, that kind of thing. Um, that's a perfect day. Uh, if I get a bunch of work done while I do it, well, you know, even better. And as I mentioned, I'm not going to mark that trail. I do have the tape with me, but I'm just, I'm tired and I got to walk back out. And Yeah, holy cow. Um, so it's about 20 degrees. Um, I've been able to kind of pace myself with the snowshoes so that I don't overheat and I still uh, continue to move. So that's cool. Um, so today's a perfect day, right? But the idyllic day, you know, that, that what is ideal? What's the, what's the end goal kind of thing? And I thought about that as well. And I, I would say that something like that would be four or five earth homes out here uh, filled with people. Uh, a pretty solid walkable trail system throughout the property, you know, to the lake, to the east, west, south, north, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that you can, you know, walk it or drive the ATV on it. And I'm talking about trails that you could walk in like sandals, right? You don't need boots to walk and that kind of thing or waders, that, that kind of thing. Um, completely self-sufficient, all the homes generating their own power, uh, collecting their own water, water catchment, uh, each home having its own uh, aquaponics farm and its own rabbit hutch, you know, everybody being able to to eat and drink and be merry, um, 
completely off the grid out here. Now, off the grid, in my mind, does not mean Stone Age, you know, technology, obviously. So, uh, yeah, internet and, you know, computers, and you could work remotely out here, or watch movies, you know, stream movies, that kind of thing, if you wanted to. Uh, do studying if you want to do some school stuff. So, um, yeah, I, in my mind, it would be, you know, a whole community of people, like-minded people, that are all living together out here and enjoying the solitude and the, the wilderness that's around here. And I should mention, yeah, uh, with all the trails and all that jazz, um, only the common areas, off limits, everywhere else, you know, let the animals roam. Who cares? Uh, if I could, I would somehow keep all the mosquitoes away from the common areas, right? Because <laughs> in the summertime, boy, the mosquitoes are something else out here. Um, so there you go, Keeks. That's the, that's the perfect day and the idyllic day for you. I had a couple other people ask me about you know, different survival techniques and things to do and, you know, could you teach this and teach that? And, and the answer is yes, and I do want to get to that, uh, but I want to get to it as I do it. Now, I can talk about things like I just mentioned, you know, an aquaponics farm, right? I, I can talk about that, uh, but until I'm actually doing it, there are many, many channels out on YouTube that will explain you know, how to build a shelter and stuff like this and how to stay warm in the winter and how to start a fire if you don't have matches and, you know, how to use a knife to baton wood, you know, make a bow, all that kind of stuff. There are many, many channels out there that talk about that. Um, I want to, I do want to just, as a note, say that, that uh, in the idyllic world, I would have a six-layer security that was uh, three-tier on each layer. Uh, what does that look like? Um, I'm not going to tell you because I'm not going to talk about what I do for security. Uh, but to give you an idea of what a, a layer and a tier looks like, uh, you know, if you had a door on your house uh, and you closed it, that's, a, that's one layer. And three tiers of that would be, you know, you've got the handle that, closes and you've got a dead bolt and then you've got uh, perhaps a bar that goes across the door that would be three tiers so just to give you kind of an idea of where my mind is at um, but I'm not going to actually talk about the security because uh, to put it bluntly I don't want to you know give away my secrets so um, having said all that um, I, I will be as I go along as an example, how do you, you know, how do you use a sawmill to chainsaw, you know, use a chainsaw mill to mill up lumber? Well, I've never done that. That's something I haven't done. But like I said, YouTube is replete with information on how to get things done. So uh, there are channels out there that'll help you. It just takes the will to, you know, hey, I want to know about this. Do a search and find the channel that, that, um, tells you what to do and how to do it and don't just trust one right um there are there are some people out there that you know a guy that comes to mind is this bear gills or whatever his name is he's supposed to be this super survivalist he does everything wrong he's it's a reality television program it's not survival um and and that's just brass tacks right i mean you got to you got to do something the right way or you die out here. <clears throat> and what does that look like f f in my current situation? Well, if I overheat and I sweat too much, it's cold out here. If I overheat and I sweat too much, I'll get a chill and hypothermia and die. And that's why you got to go slow, pace yourself. You, you never, ever in the snow, you never want to sweat, ever. Um, if you can, if you can absolutely avoid it. So that's why you got to really monitor your body temperature. And that's because water and cold, you know, the water will just sap the heat away from your body. Um, and that costs a lot of calories. And if your core temperature drops too low, you know, you're in, you're in danger. You're in some serious trouble. So, um, 
stuff like that is, is basic survival lessons. And I guess that's one that I can explain right now. And I just did. So <laughs> you're welcome. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what's upcoming for 23. So um, I'm there's quite a bit of equipment that I have to get, or at least I'm hoping to get, right? And one of them is an ATV. Um, I'm, I'll try to walk you out so you can kind of get an idea how far I've had to come. It should be faster on the way out just because the trail's already broke. Um, but it, it is quite a ways. And for most of it, I mean, there is a snowmobile that was back in there, as I mentioned. Um, for most of it, I don't think that I could get an ATV in and out of there right now uh it would take some effort to to be able to drive an atv out here in the winter um and that's just the way it is uh, so at some point i'm gonna have to have a sled as well i think uh i'll cross that bridge when i come to it but for the new year i'm hoping to have that atv it'll have a winch on it and i'll be able to cart gear around easier and drive back and forth instead of all this humping around in the in the trails and stuff um, and being able to you know with the winch and bringing gear in and stuff I'll be able to pull a lot of stumps out and drag trees around and and all that kind of, of, of stuff um, I'm also going to be getting some obviously some some mechanical you know metal building materials and stuff for the platform you know screws and things like that just stupid basic hardware uh, the chainsaw mill, as I mentioned, I still don't have that, but I will uh, get one of those so that I can put that together. Uh, have not been able to get the Reaper. Hard to come across. Uh, I would, you know, you would think something like that. Uh, you'd be able to get your hands on it, but finding a reputable dealer that can get me one uh, is a challenge in my area. Still working on that. Got to have that high-powered rifle out here. Uh, I'm really surprised that I saw bear tracks. I expected that they would have still been hibernating, but... I mean, if the bear are running around out here, they're hungry, and if I come across them, you know, and they get mean, right now, I'm pretty well buggered because, you know, all I've got is a pistol, and that's not going to, all that's going to do is, you know, piss off the moose and piss off the bear. So, um, definitely need to get the, the high-powered rifle. Uh, that's, that's a must-have kind of kind of situation. Um, the tent is on the way. I did buy a UP2 and a cot. Uh beautiful beautiful folding cots like military style cot uh i i put it together and yeah i mean it's two and a half or three feet up off the ground um and a lot more comfortable than sleeping on on you know roots um and as i said the tent is on the way uh they were out of i intend to get the stove uh, the additional floor and the uh the water heater that you put onto the stove pipe 12 liter water heater uh but they're they're just not there it's not in stock so when they come back in stock i'll, I'll get those um also recently got some additional uh freeze-dried food mountain house finally came got some stuff i went to the site and i was like holy cow they've got stuff available so i uh, got two more months of that um two more months of freeze-dried food so that's good. Uh, that puts my my freeze dried food at about nine months, and you know I've got rice and beans for a couple of years and a couple of months worth of canned goods and stuff like that. So um, I still want to get an apartment up here so that I'm I'm closer. And then you know the move to this apartment that's still in the works. That's not really equipment, but it is something you know that I need to acquire. Um, and then probably this time, this time next year, uh, ish, I'll, I'll move completely out of uh, my home base now and into my home base up here. At least I'm, that's kind of the timeline. Um, internet, I want to be able to get some internet back in here. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, Starlink is the thing, but maybe I can just get a, a booster for um, my cell phone service uh, put that you know climb up in a tree and put that up high enough up in a tree the antenna and give that power uh, because I can get 5g out here on occasion uh, so I, I think that if I got high enough up in a tree with a, an antenna and you know a booster antenna uh, and then let that hot spot to my phone I mean that gives me 
uh, internet. So I'm going to be looking into that as well and other options um, to find out, you know, if I if anything uh, makes sense so that I can get some internet back in here. Uh, and then potentially, you know, over summer at least, I can, you know, come back in here and work from here, right? And then as soon as I'm off of work, I can get back to my work. <laughs> okay, so I I'm going to try to walk you all out of here. Um, I, I apologize. It's a little bit longer, but, uh, you know, I do take requests. So <laughs> if you want to hear my thoughts on anything else, feel free to go ahead and ask. Um, I, I hope that my idea of perfect day wasn't a disappointment, Keeks. Eat more fruit.